Hello, mes amis. I'm Eldritch Sugar, and today we're talking about the conclusion of Vazler's campaign. We're picking up at the end of the Mind Electric animatic, so that might be worth a refresher watch. Also, if you're interested in exactly what happened since the beginning of the campaign, I have another video for that. But I'm admittedly not very happy with how it turned out. You can check those out if you like, but for the time being, let's focus on this video. This is kind of a long story, so I recommend you get comfy. Before it all gets too complicated, let's just list all the player characters in the party. Des, the Halfling Artificer, Ideal, the Tiefling Oathbreaker Paladin, Joel, the Human Grave Cleric, Nebor, the Kobold Druid, and of course, Bazthar, the Lizardfolk Warlock, who is still coming to terms with his new patron and his subsequent servitude. His mission was to scatter crystal around the places they traveled. The party had been paid to escort a caravan headed towards the Balbon Mountains. The god king of the country had declared the area safe to explore after the demon Tanager had been defeated. The caravan stopped at a small town for the night, and the leader told the party not to go to the nearby ruins. So of course, we went to the nearby ruins! For the sake of brevity, the most important details are 1. This was a buried drow castle. 2. Des figured out Bazthar's staff is extremely magical. He asked them about it, and Bazthar claimed it was just a spellcasting focus. 3. There were two navigation orbs, one for the castle the party had previously destroyed, and one for the castle everyone was currently in. They were protected by magical barriers. 4. Bazthar broke the barrier and embedded a shard of crystal into the orb. That'll be a bit important later. On the way out, a drow assassin attacked us and then turned to smoke. So Des caught him in the bag of holding, which was A-plus thinking on his part. We got back to our inn and were introduced to an NPC human bard that would be joining the caravan. His name was Farley and Abazthar was incredibly suspicious of him. He thought Farley was either a Tanager agent or another follower of his new patron, and he didn't know which was worse. Farley, however, was seemingly intent on cheering up Bazthar, who did not, in fact, cheer up. After that debacle, we opened up the bag of holding to see if our drow assassin was still in there, and they were, so a ridiculous fight scene followed. It was a new dawn, it was a new day, and the party traveled onwards. Next, we found a nomad tribe of barbarians who refused to be under the rule of the Balbon God King. We promised to escort them to the edge of the country if they followed behind us, and in exchange, they showed us a cache of purple amethyst crystals. The party, comprising of a bunch of greedy bastards, decided to mine them up and sell them in the next big town. Bastlar had a slightly different motive. He wanted to sell the crystals so they could be distributed throughout the land, basically doing his job on a much grander scale. It was perfect, it was foolproof, except it wasn't. At the next big city, the water weird guards wouldn't allow us to bring the crystals in without examination, but we smuggled them in anyways. Bazlar disguised himself and scattered them in the streets. Des studied them back at the inn. Adil was having somewhat of a faith crisis, as the Hydra goddess of nature had reached out to him and offered to help the former Oathbreaker find purpose. And Joel went to the temple of his god, a baby Hydra that created zombies. He offered them as a gift to his deity, and after a nat 20, the god king himself happened to respond. He sensed a powerful evil presence emanating from the crystals, and he ordered all of the gems to be seized. Meanwhile, Des had gotten a message from one of his former friends, inviting him to check out his research. He went to the meeting, and Bazthar snuck in a bit later. At the top of the tower, Des's colleague told him what he was planning. He was tired of the God King's rule and feeling powerless against his water-weird army. He thought the crystals, which he identified as scrying stones, would help in his plans. Des was someone who supported the God King and believed that he made the country a better place by eliminating manual labor. Des tried to leave, but he was stopped. Bazlar had just made it up the stairs, still in disguise, but he saw one of the guards as a horrifying crystal abomination, looking at him dead in the eye. He ran down the stairs as fast as he could with the monster in pursuit. He fell to the ground, expecting this to be the end, but a squadron of water weirds and our cleric rushed up, arrested the guards and Des's colleagues, and attempted to comfort this very frightened lizard. Bazlar woke up in a hospital bed with a water weird watching over him. He demanded to be taken back to his friends, so the weird picked him up and just, poof, teleported the two of them. From then on, the weird was Bazlar's caretaker. It was supposedly programmed to keep him from harm. It had said, in its cold robotic voice, that the staff was actively hurting Bazlar, but it couldn't comprehend why he would cling to it. Bazlar held onto his staff as tight as he could, but our cleric Joel heard the whole exchange, yoinked the staff, and cast Remove Curse on it. Suddenly, 
Vassler felt different. The constant quiet whispers in his brain had faded out. He felt the way he did after Tanager had severed their ties, powerless and alone. The caravan continued as normal, except for the water weird carrying Vazthar everywhere. Finally, they reached the Balbon mountain range and received their payment. The party split up to investigate the area, and Des demanded to know what the water weird was doing and why it was assigned to Vazthar. He had never heard of any weird with caregiving functionalities. They were able to glean that it was actually trying to get the staff away from Vazthar and bring it back to the capital for further examination. It made a lunge for the staff, but Vazthar kept it away. He knew that there would be horrible, horrible consequences if the God King found out what he was tied to. The Weird grabbed both Baslar and the staff and teleported them away, back to the capital. Chaos and parallel plots ensued. Vess and the rest of the party found a way to teleport to the capital thanks to a dog artificer NPC. When they arrived, Des had an idea. He grabbed an amethyst crystal from his pocket and reached out to whatever it was tied to. He begged to be shown the path to Baslar, and shockingly, a glowing trail appeared in front of him, but he felt exhaustion sitting deep into his body. Weakly, he told everyone the way to go, and he was carried to the destination. In the tower of a library, Baslar was surrounded by water weirds. An interrogator was asking him what he knew about the staff, why he wouldn't hand it over, why he was voluntarily subjecting himself to mental torture, and so on. Eventually, they grew frustrated and cast a spell to read his mind. Baslar was preparing himself for a spell he didn't have the power to stop when Ideal and Des burst through the floorboards, yelling at the top of their lungs. And what follows went about as poorly as it possibly could have. The weirds automatically do damage if you get close to them, and all three of us were very close. The first wave was tough, but Ideal marked himself as the biggest target. Then one of the weirds looked at Des, who was struggling to even stand, and sent an energy bolt right through his chest. He was killed instantly, and Bastar could only watch as his closest friend, someone he cared about more than anyone, and someone he would never get the chance to tell the truth to, fell dead to the ground, with a crystal shard embedded in his palm. Bastar desperately pulled himself to his friend's side, spotted the crystal, and connected to his patron again. Des didn't deserve to die, but how badly did Bastar want him back? The voice in his mind said to place the crystal over Des's wound. Vaslar reached out and almost made it, but the weirds finally overtook Ideal. They struck him down and moved on to Vaslar, who couldn't protect himself. Joel burst into the room a moment too late. He couldn't revive them, he didn't have the diamonds for a revivify, but then a familiar voice appeared. Farley. What was he doing here? There was no time to explain, but Farley was supposed to be on the other side of the country with the caravan. And then they were somewhere else. Joel, his skeletal minotaur, and his friends were teleported somewhere mountainous, yet familiar. During the confusion, Farley stepped backwards into an orange oxidized rock and phased right into the ground. Des was ascending, reaching up towards the light, when crystalline spider legs grabbed at him, pulling him downwards. He saw infinite eyes illuminating the sky and telling him he was an unappreciated genius. His mind shouldn't be lost so soon. They would make sure he'd accomplish great things for them, and his arms glowed as runes were engraved right into his skin. Ideal was standing in a glowing chamber with a hydra right in front of him. She told him he had the capacity for so much more greatness, and it wasn't his time for his soul to be lifted out of his body. He felt himself descending slowly and changing. Baslar was falling, and falling fast. He was swan diving directly into a pit of fire. It was over! He'd lost! He felt the flames burning his face when something grabbed at him, dragging him upwards and refusing to let him go. Des woke up. The hole in his chest had been filled with crystal, and his arms were etched with purple marks. He was alive, but he realized the kind of life he had ahead of him. He saw Ideal's body crumble into ashes, and something rose from them. It was an ASMR. Ideal had been reborn. Des heard shrieking, and saw Baslar clutching his left eye. Shards of crystal jutted out from his face, before morphing into an orb to rest in the empty socket. Baslar heard it again and again in his mind. You belong to me, and you'll never escape me again. 
All the while, Joel had been examining the rock, and his Minotaur was preparing to attack it. Basthar just couldn't stop them in time. The instant they hit the rock, they were pulled inside of it, and the only thing their companions could do was follow. They were transported inside of the mountain itself, surrounded by molten, bubbling lava. Standing on an outpeak was none other than Farley. He wasn't just a bard, he was a proud agent of Tanager, and he lured all of them into a trap set just for the one who betrayed and doomed his master, and Joel fired a spell at him before he could finish his big villain monologue. Lava elementals surrounded the party, a crowd of warlocks appeared behind Farley, everything seemed hopeless, and Basthar was immediately knocked unconscious. The voice returned, berating him for being incompetent, especially seeing as it had just saved him from death. But Basthar proposed a deal. He promised to be a model follower, dedicating every waking moment to his patron. He'd leave his friends behind forever if he could just save them now. And that seemed to appease his ever-watchful captor. Basthar's body twitched and shuddered. He was moving like a puppet being pulled by its strings, crystal encasing his body violently. He looked at his enemy with nothing but bloodlust. The monster that was once Basthar rushed Farley and the other warlocks, ruthlessly tearing them apart with his amethyst fangs. The party finished off the elementals and ran to his side. Ideal, with his new celestial wings, flew up to see his friend reverting back to his original form. Except something wasn't right. His eye had rolled back into his head and fog was pouring out of his mouth. Then he spoke in a voice that definitely wasn't Basthar's. For the sake of your friend, never question this. Do not seek to understand. He may well end up dead thanks to your selfishness. And then Basthar fell to the ground with no memory of what had just happened. He told Ideal that he needed to leave the group, go somewhere far, far away where he would never see them again. Ideal insisted on staying with him. He promised not to question what was going on, but he had a duty to be there and protect his friend, no matter what. And suddenly, our buried castle came crumbling through the side of the mountain, highlighted by none other than Nebur, our kobold druid, who is here to save us all. From there, the story ended somewhat ambiguously. Joel and Nebur flew off in the castle, converting it into a research station to further study the amethyst crystals. Little did they know that they were being watched from the crystal Basthar had left in the navigation orb earlier. They had given it an aerial view of the world, and they were none the wiser. Des and Basthar now shared the same patron. They were tasked with continuing their work and spreading the entity's field of vision. However, Ideal stayed with them, and he kept his word. He never questioned or interfered with their work in any way, but the whole time, he was secretly trying to figure out a way to free his friends. Nothing was really established after that, but I like to imagine Basler made the best of his situation. He wouldn't want anyone to fall in the same hole he did. That is, being susceptible to manipulation by demons in the first place. He would deal with any remaining Tanager warlocks in the process, but his main goal would be to save lives, not to take his anger out on others. The world had given him nothing but suffering and isolation, until he experienced the transformative powers of empathy and friendship. He becomes selfless, despite the weight on his soul. And maybe, he attains some level of happiness. And that concludes Basthar's story arc. From a bitter, angry lizard folk desperate to feel powerful over others, to a friend who sacrificed everything for the people he cared about. I think he deserves a happy ending, considering everything I put him through. Thank you for watching! I appreciate the constant support, and I'm so happy all of you were interested in my character in the first place. It's all thanks to you that I'm making this video. But, now I think I can move on to different stories to tell that might just pique your interest. Thank you again for your time, and have a sweet day!